Good morning. So 15 seconds. That's the title of the show today. It is, of course, about the massacre that happened in the small Texas church where 7% of an entire town was extinguished, executed on Sunday morning. On Monday, I wrote a blog, which Facebook thought it was so good it posted it twice. <clears throat> no, that was a glitch. Um, Facebook was having some serious problems in my area on Monday, and therefore the blog got posted on my timeline twice. But that's good, because I thought it was a very good blog. I'm proud of it. And I'm not going to reiterate what I said in the blog. You can go back and read it. It's both on my timeline and on my Political Paula page. Today, what I want to talk about is that I'm going to take you backwards a little bit. Because we have to remember our history. Because remember, if we forget our history, we are destined to repeat it. And there is parts of our history, especially our recent history in the last 20 years or so, that we don't want to repeat. We really don't. When 20 kindergartners were executed sitting at their desks at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, President Obama came to the podium with anger in his voice and tears in his eyes. And he said, this is becoming the new normal, where I am coming out here way too often to be the consoler in chief, to offer condolences to grieving families of mass shootings. Many or almost all of these mass shootings that we have experienced have been committed by people with weapons that only trained military people should be allowed to have and use. I don't care about the Second Amendment. We're going to talk about that. They are also people that were known to either be threatening, be criminals, or have mental illnesses. Now, let's make one thing clear about what happened on Sunday. This was not a gun issue. Because this monster purchased the guns legally. And we're going to talk about that. Why? This was not a mental health issue either. This was an anger issue. This monster hated his ex-wife, as many ex-husbands hate their ex-wives. And he hated his ex-wife's parents, his, especially his mother-in-law. And I gotta tell you the truth. You don't have to have a mental illness or be insane or be bipolar or be on medication to hate your ex-wife or your in-laws. Millions and millions of people hate their ex-spouses and they hate their in-laws. They don't go out and buy AR-15s and multiple rounds of ammo and go gunning for them. They just don't like them. That is not a mental health problem. This is an anger problem. Now, the monster bought, we don't say his name, we do not give him any credit because he, is, he has no meaning to us except for the poor victims that he left in his wake. We only care about them. But this monster, he was convicted by the United States Air Force of a felony. And the felony was, by the way, beating the shit out of his wife, then wife, and fracturing the skull of his stepchild, who was an, a baby at the time. Do you know how horrible you have to be, how much anger you have to have in you to fracture an infant's skull? He was convicted and court-martialed. Once you are convicted, especially of domestic violence, but any felony, you are not allowed to legally purchase a weapon in the United States of America. That's what the background checks are for. The laws are already there, dudes. You Second Amendment people, we're not trying to change the Second Amendment. The laws are there. And you know why we don't let people who beat their wives and their children buy guns when they're convicted? Because if you can beat the shit out of your wife and a child, chances are you have so much anger in you that if you have access to a weapon, especially 
an automatic weapon, you're going to go gunning for the people that you take your anger out on, which is your wife and your children. It would put them in danger. They would have to fear you for the rest of their lives, as apparently his ex-wife and her in-laws should have feared this man. Because even though they were divorced and he was remarried, he never lost the anger he had for his ex-wife and her family. He was sending his mother-in-law threatening texts stalking them because he went to the church we just found out for their fall fest probably checking the church out seeing if his in-laws were there he was there before the massacre on sunday but here's where the ball got dropped again not a second amendment issue not a mental health issue but it is an information sharing issue Okay. The Air Force has admitted that, oh, we forgot to let the federal civilian database know that this monster was dangerous, that he had been convicted of a felony and of domestic abuse and violence against a child. See, somebody at the Air Force, when they were typing up the report, forgot to hit send. Maybe their server was down that day. Maybe the Russians got in there and I don't know. <clears throat> but here is the real problem. The gun seller who sold this monster his guns did not break any laws. Because he didn't have the appropriate information. Now how would you feel if your ex-husband beat the shit out of you, fractured your child's skull, was convicted, and all of a sudden now, because of a glitch with the United States Air Force, he's out there buying AR-15s and ammunition and looking for you and your family. And how would you feel if eight members of your family were massacred because the United States Air Force forgot to hit send? And because this monster didn't like his in-laws. How would you feel? How would you feel if you lost two of your grandchildren and your daughter-in-law and your five-year-old grandson is fighting for his life in the hospital? Probably never going to be the same again if he survives. If you realized it was because this guy was pissed off at his in-laws. And the United States Air Force forgot to hit them. Now I'm going to take you back a real long time ago, although to me it's like yesterday. Because there's a lot of people, whenever I talk about this or write about this, I have a Second Amendment. It guarantees me the right to bear arms. I want to defend my family. Well, first of all, <coughs> my husband, who is a Marine, as you all know, proudly served his country for eight years. He taught me how to shoot a gun, not an AR-15, not a rifle, nothing. He taught me how to shoot a 9mm. It's a semi-automatic. It's got 15 rounds, but it doesn't boom, 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 boom. You've got to cock it. And here's what my husband told me when he taught me how to shoot. First of all, you go for the kill shot if you're defending yourself. And I'm like, well, I don't want to kill anybody. He's like, wait a minute. He said, you only get one bullet. If you are in danger, you get one shot. And you need to make a count. Because you're not going to get another shot. You'll be dead. If you miss with the first shot, you will be dead. And he's right. I don't need an AR-15 that can shoot off 200 rounds in 15 seconds seconds, which they found 200 bullet casings in that church, 15 seconds, to shoot 46 people, killing 26 of them. So think about that. Half of everybody he hit is dead. President Trump says, well, it won't make a difference. People are using cars to kill people. People use knives to kill people. Do you, any of you logically, who have brains, really believe that this monster could have injured, for, could have 
knocked over 46 people and killed 20 if he had driven a car into that church. Do you think he could have done this kind of damage with a knife? No. No. Because somebody in that church would have tackled him. It's really hard to stab a five-year-old five times in 15 seconds. It's really hard to shoot 46 people in 15 seconds, to stab 46 people in 15 seconds with a knife. That's hard. It's a lot easier when you got an automatic weapon. And you can shoot off 200 rounds in 15 seconds. Now I'm going to take you back, those who love the Second Amendment so much. I want to talk about another amendment. It's called the Fourth Amendment. It is our protection against illegal search and seizure by any entity of our government, unless they have something called probable cause. They have to think that you are involved in a crime or that there is something illegal in your home, and they have to have a search warrant. Well, everybody remember that beautiful Tuesday morning in September of 2001? You know, they say, oh, you know, cars aren't weapons, but people use them as weapons. Well, airplanes were not weapons either. They're not designed to kill people. They're designed to safely carry people from one destination to another. But on that beautiful September morning, airplanes turned into weapons because red flags were missed. 19 terrorists bought one-way tickets with cash, all going across the country on four different airplanes. In their personal carry-on luggage, they had box cutters. And they had just recently learned how to fly planes without bothering to care about taking off or landing because they didn't plan on doing any of that. In our own country, at flight schools in America, okay, they were not searched, they were not pulled out for special screening by the airport security, and they got on those planes, and because of that, 3,000 innocent Americans were killed that morning. Now, how do we go through the airport today? Any one of us, for no reason whatsoever, can be randomly pulled out and we can be searched. We can be patted down by a stranger, by a TSA agent, an agent of the government. No warrant, no probable cause. I'm not a criminal. I don't have a record. As far as I know, I'm not on a no-fly list. My last name is in Arabic which of course shouldn't matter, but it does. I'm as white as the whitest American citizen can be. But I can be pulled out and screened and super screened and I can have my luggage searched. I can have my phone confiscated and be forced to unlock it and let a stranger see Everybody in my contact list, every picture on my phone, everything on that phone, without probable cause, without suspicion of any crime, Fourth Amendment. But the Fourth Amendment gets parked in the airport parking lot. And guess how many people in America, innocent people, have been killed with an airplane since 9-11-01? Zero. It worked. Yes, we gave up our Fourth Amendment rights. We give up our Fourth Amendment rights when we walk into an airport. But if we want to travel, if we want to get from point A to point B without having to drive hours and hours and hours and days and days and days, we have to submit to the TSA screenings. And they can do whatever they want. We have heard of 13-year-old children being strip-searched by TSA. Kids. Children. Where's their Fourth Amendment right? What crime are they being accused of? Where's the search warrant? There isn't one. 
<clears throat> so when those of you who roll out the Second Amendment, think about the Fourth Amendment that has been trampled all over by the United States government since 9-11. But it has kept us safe. Now, if we had stronger vetting processes to buy a, a weapon, okay? Yeah, it would be inconvenient. Just like taking your shoes off and being strip searched and having your undies and your, you know, having a stranger go through your private stuff in your suitcase, that's inconvenient. You might have to wait a couple extra days or a couple extra weeks to get your gun. But what would that matter unless you have a plan for that gun? That you need it quick. Because you know where the person you're gunning for is going to be on a certain day and you want to make sure you have your gun so you can go kill them. Any law-abiding citizen who is afraid of a background check probably has something to be afraid of. No one is saying you can't buy a gun. But I will ask you this. How many mass shootings, how many innocent children and innocent people have died in Canada, in Australia, and in Europe? Sure, they have terrorist attacks. But how many mass shootings have they had? How many workplace shootings? How many school and university shootings have they had? Well, not as many as us. And in fact, some of them haven't had any at all. If we are going to say that the Second Amendment trumps all, and it cannot be changed as the Fourth Amendment was after 9-11, and 3,000 innocents were killed, if after Newtown, the Pulse nightclub, Las Vegas, the church in Carolina, this current church, Virginia Tech, the Aurora movie theater, the Planned Parenthood shooting in Colorado, Las Vegas, if we can't say after all of that over decades, that we can't change the Second Amendment, Amendment, but because of one day, four hours, during September 11, 2001, 3,000 people were killed by an airplane, by airplanes. We can trump, we can tramp all over the Fourth Amendment, but we can't ever fuck with the Second Amendment. Which, next to terrorism, and actually terrorism on 9-11 specifically, Mass shootings have killed more innocent American people than terrorism ever has in this country. You start adding up all the victims of mass shootings, and I'm talking about all of them. The workplace shootings, where maybe three or four are killed, but we don't hear about that as much. But if you start adding up all of these people who were murdered because someone was angry or someone was mentally ill and someone got a gun who shouldn't have, I bet it's more than 3,000. And yet we will completely erase the Fourth Amendment of our Constitution after 9-11. And it's worked. It's worked. No more airplanes. Now, airplanes, of course, not designed to kill. Guns are designed to kill people or to kill things. People don't buy guns to shoot out those cute little confetti things that come out of guns. Boom. There are real bullets in those guns. Some people use them for target shooting. I love to go target shooting. That's great. But the minute you fire that gun, a bullet comes out of it, and a bullet is meant to cause damage. Watch a beer can explode when you shoot it. Watch a, a bottle explode when you shoot it. That's what happens to human beings when you shoot at them. People shoot deer. They don't use AR-15s to shoot deer because you won't have any meat left. Because the deer would just explode. So we do have to ask, why do we need AR-15s in the civilian world? Especially since, again, my husband says you only need one bullet to defend yourself because if you need more than one, you're dead. You're dead anyway. 
good hunters should really only need one bullet to take down a deer. And if they want to eat the deer, they better not be using an AR-15 because there won't be any meat to eat. <clears throat> I don't think it tramples anybody's rights to own weapons. A rifle, a hunting rifle, a handgun. If we say these automatic weapons need to be only for military use. I don't understand why... You know, a guy living down the street from me needs an AR-15. Why anybody needs an AR-15. If you know why, if you know a good reason why an AR-15 is needed, why you would ever need to fire 200 rounds in 15 seconds, please let me know. I would like to know, other than killing a whole bunch of people, what an AR-15 could possibly be used for for the good. For good. So that's the show. That is the show. Um, like I said, we uh, we worry so much about this Second Amendment. I don't fly because I don't like to be inconvenienced. I don't like strangers feeling me up. I don't like strangers looking through my suitcases or looking at my phone or looking at my computer. But I am grateful that if I do choose to fly, the chances of me being killed in a terrorist attack on a plane is probably very, very close to zero. Sadly, I can't say the same if I decide I want to go to a concert or go to a nightclub, go to a shopping mall, or even go to church. As inconvenient as it is to board a plane in 2017, I guess I feel safer on that plane than I would in church. What do you have to say about that? Political Paula, out. <laughs>